Hey everybody, I'm Lance Goyke. Today we're gonna to discuss conditioning for sport specific training and what kind of rest period you should be looking for. So uh, I, I'm not gonna give a blanket answer here now. So we've talked about strength and power and endurance and hypertrophy and all those different things. So you kind of understand I have to sit back and I have to look for whatever physiological adaptation that I want from my training. And then, and only then, can I pick a rest period that is appropriate. Because then I understand the demands of my sport, right? So the idea for the sport here is I want to look at maybe a time motion analysis. So people do these studies where they watch players play games and they kind of, they, they group their activities into different sections, different buckets. So if you watch a soccer game, for example, uh, a lot of the time somebody's just spending it walking or standing. And it's not a big deal. And then some of the time, the person is kind of jogging. And then a short period of time, they are sprinting to or with the ball, okay? And at that point, they need to beat the other player. So at that point, max power is the most um, necessary training adaptation for this person. Now, you have to take into consideration how long is this person playing? So if they're like a third string player and they never get to play, then it's way more important for them not to be conditioned to play the entire game because they're not gonna get to anyway, but to be fast, fast enough to beat the person in front of them. Um, so you wanna, you wanna optimize their ability to succeed in the situations that they are given, right? So. We have to, you know, we have, to, this is like, this is a short video on evaluating the bioenergetics of a, a sporting event. Another example, let's think about American football. So I mentioned this in another video previously, but the average play, if we watch these time motion analyses, lasts six seconds. Basically, these people, all these people are going as hard as they freaking can for six seconds, and then they're resting. They're, if you're a wide receiver, you're probably jogging back to the, the line of scrimmage. Um, props to me for knowing what the line of scrimmage is. Uh, if you are a lineman, you are standing up, and you get to wait the rest of the, the off time. Um, but generally, that off time is about 30 seconds. So if I am a wide receiver, I'm going to need to give you a little bit more aerobic efforts, right? They're probably not all out sprinting all the time because they can't be super fatigued when they have to handle the ball. They have to catch it still. Um, so fighting off those maximal fatigues and uh, maximal fatigue states and um, maximizing their aerobic capabilities is really, really important for people like wide receivers. Now, with a lineman, if he gets beat, it's his fault, right? And then the play is then going to go poorly for you if you get beat. So the idea for them is, yes, if they're going to play the whole game, they have to have some aerobic capacity available to them. But for the most part, they need to be heavy and they need to output a lot of force and a lot of power um, for those six seconds. Because that's all they have, right? That's the only opportunity that they have. And they don't need to be able to jog back to the line of scrimmage because they're pretty much there already anyway. Um, okay. Those are two examples. Let's think of another one. So if I evaluate hockey, right? So ice hockey, people will um, take pretty short shifts. Oftentimes you're coming out, if you're a really good player, you're coming out every other shift. And so a shift might be 20 to 40 seconds long. And that means I'm, I'm probably gonna play for 30 seconds and I'm probably gonna rest for 30 seconds. Now, if I played soccer or American football, wait, not American football, European football. Uh, if I played soccer for 30 seconds, we talked about what that might look like, right? That might look like two seconds of sprinting to the ball and then 10 seconds of jogging and then whatever is left for walking around, right? Uh, for ice hockey, when you're not active, you're gliding and pretty quickly because there's not this fatigue because you're on ice and you're on this blade that slides along the ice really well. 
And so you're going to run into the next bout of activity really quickly. So they don't have all this downtime. Their sport in general is a little bit more lactic. Um, like the work periods are a little bit more lactic. Now, that doesn't mean I need to maximize the ability for the lactic system to work because some research shows us that as we train the lactic system, we kind of peak out on training after like maximally six weeks. Um, the other big issue here is that lactic system is just serving as a buffer, right? It's not pushing off the fatigue. It's not pushing off my, um, my gassing out. It's, it's just buffering in case I need to keep my intensity up. The real name of the game for people like ice hockey players is the aerobic system. I need the aerobic system to produce energy at anaerobic rates, right? I need it to be able to uh, recover me. I need it to fight off the uh, fatigue byproducts that are building up during my intense activities. Um, so I don't want to just train them only 30-30 with max intensity for every rep because I'm just going to fatigue them, right? I'm not going to get an a, you know a really strong aerobic stimulus, which requires a volume of training, like a, a you know generous period of time to be training. I want to start maximizing. Maybe maybe they're going for 30 seconds, but they're not going all out for 30 seconds. Or maybe we could push something to like 20 seconds of work with 40 seconds of rest. That's going to be a lot more aerobic. It's still going to be anaerobic and it's still going to stress those anaerobic uh, um, systems and energy development. Um, but we allow for enough time to actually accumulate training volume. Let's give a little summary. So I can't give you a summary of this is the time that you need for your sport to train. But what I can do is say, just think about the sport. Think about not just the sport, but the position that this person is playing and think about the, the you know, the situation that they are in. Right. If they are a third tier player, then make sure they're fast. If they're a first tier player, make sure they don't get tired during the game because they're probably good already. They don't need to beat people even more than they already beat people, right? Um, evaluate, maybe with a time motion analysis, evaluate what the demands of the sport and the position are, and that will help you understand the kinds of rest period you need and the intensity levels that you need to train in a sport-specific manner. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. I am Lance Goyke. If you didn't like this video, please feel free to just close out of that window. But if you did like it, uh, give me a little thumbs up down there and give me a subscribe. Hit the bell to be notified when I release new videos, which is currently daily. Uh, we're talking about energy systems right now. We've talked about squats, deadlifts, bench presses, handstands, uh, pull ups, all sorts of stuff already. Um, and who knows what's next? If you want anything that is related to personal training, strength coaching, stuff like that, or if you're just a curious kind of weekend warrior who likes to be fitter and understand their body better, um, I think we're going to jive pretty well. If we're not, you know, don't subscribe. That's fine. But I think we will. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.